for those um, that have not been in the fellowship, we, we gave out a spiritual test, if you will. And for those of us that have taken that spiritual test, understand that this, this is only a parameter, the test is only a parameter of the gift that you may uh, possess. But understand something, you can't know how to operate in your gift unless you know the gift giver. Amen, Amen somebody. So you first of all have to know Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and we know that um, him, uh, uh, that the, the, very, the very principle of our Christian belief are founded on the very simple fact that Christ died for our sins, mm -hmm. he was buried, mm -hmm. and on the third day, what? He rose again from the dead. Amen. So, so that, that's the first thing that you have to know and believe. And as we, as we look at this lesson, we're going to talk about who is, or I'm going to teach you on who is the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Because many of us, many of us, um, we don't know who the Holy Spirit is or how he operates. To, to many of us that are in the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit is mysterious. We, we don't, we like, what does he do? How does he operate? What does he do? Is, is he a ghost? Is he a spirit? Because sometimes in scriptures you see the Holy Ghost. And we don't know how he operates. But today, I prayerfully through the aid of the Holy Spirit, we're going to teach you to help, me, hopefully to understand who he is. Amen? Um, and, and, and knowing who he is, you got to first of all understand, like I said, we have to know that Christ died. He, 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 was, he, was, he died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again. But understand this, that had he not died, yeah. had he not been buried, had he not rose again, then the Holy Spirit would not have come to aid us. That's right. Is that right? That's right so much so in John chapter 16, John chapter 16 and verse 7 and 8, the scripture <laughs> says, the scripture says, amen. In, in the New King James Version, nevertheless, this is Jesus talking, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, and that helper is also the Holy Spirit, all right? He will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So one of the reasons why, yes, Jesus died for our sins, but in order for, he, he died for our sins, and when he died for our sins, then when he died, he left us, he didn't leave us the words that he didn't leave us comfortless. That's right. That's right. That's right, Pastor. So now, here it is, now we have the Holy Spirit that operates, that should be operating in our lives. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense to you? Yes, sir. Because you got to understand something, beloved, that <coughs> if the truth be told, we're not all that bright. <laughs> we're not. You know, the truth be told, you look back over your life, we've done some things in our lives that when you think, you're like, man, did I do that? Amen. 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 We are, um, we are finite beings, beloved. That's right. And we only have a small capability of comprehending certain things, and especially when it comes to the Word of God. And so much so that God chooses how to, uh, 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 if you will, feed us mm -hmm. so we can understand and comprehend his character. All right, all right. All right? So many of us, we want, to, we want to experience the fullness of God and the fullness of his glory, but don't you understand, we cannot, we cannot take the fullness of his glory. Amen, amen. We can't, the Bible says, let, let, let me show you what I'm talking about. In Exodus chapter 33, in Exodus chapter 33, in verse 18, and reading from the New International Version, mm -hmm. Moses, in these few verses, he wants to experience and see the glory of the Lord. That's right. All right? Mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful thing, Danette, for you to desire, to feel and experience and to see his glory. But as you will see, just like Moses, he couldn't take but so much. That's right. God couldn't give him so much. If he would give him the full impact of his glory, you're going to find out in a minute, he wouldn't be able to survive. Mm -hmm. My Lord, my Lord. Exodus chapter 33 and verse, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong. Just, just pay attention. Just leave that right there for me, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Beginning at verse 12. I'm sorry. Beginning at verse 12. You got it? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Moses said to the Lord, <coughs> you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me 
know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. I just need to start right there because, because Moses gives to us a remedy, if you will, that ought to rely or, or lie in each and every one of us to realize that we can't do nothing without him. And Moses is saying, listen, I, I, I need you. I need you. I need you in my life. He said, so he says, what? Teach me. Teach me your ways. I, I don't know it all, but I need to know. Teach me your ways. Because I can't leave this nation. He said, remember, these are your people. So listen, for those of us that are head of households, we need to be praying this prayer. Father, teach me your ways. So I can lead, listen, my children, they're not my children, they're yours. They are a gift to me, so teach me, Father, how to lead my children. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Amen. In our relationships, in our marriages, teach me, Father, how to love my husband. Father, teach me how to love my wife. Because guess what? If you, if you, really, if you really sum it all up, Marcel, we really don't know how to love. Not the way God loves. Because God loves unconditional. And sometimes we in relationships and we mad at folk for years and years and years. My Lord, but yet still we love. Them. But you can't get past this one little hurdle. And you might get over it for a minute. But let old boy or old girl do something wrong. Here come the scorecard. Mm -hmm. That's not love. Amen. Love don't keep no record. No, Amen. Talk to me somebody. Amen. Okay, let, 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 me, let me finish. Here we go, Jordan. Verse 14, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? See, we, we, we're, we're, we, we ought to, there ought to be a difference between us Amen. and the world. Amen. Amen. There ought to be a distinguishing factor. And the distinguishing factor is knowing that we have God on our side that's leading us. See, we don't make decisions based on what the stock market says. Talk to me, somebody. We don't make decisions upon what somebody else says. We make decisions on, on what we know that God has done for us in our lives. Mm -hmm. So in verse 17, the, the Lord says, And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Gosh. <laughs> He's, but he knows me. <clears throat> Digging us around, he knows me by my name. And that's <laughs> Isaiah, he said he's pleased with me. Which means he knows my mess up. Moses messed up a whole bunch of times. But he says, I'm pleased with you, and I know you. Don't you understand? God knows who you are. He knows the very fiber of who you are. He is the one that created you. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing about you or I that surprises him. Mm -hmm. He knows you by your name. Mm -hmm. And watch this. It's not Isaiah. It's not Daniel. Mm -hmm. It's not even Sam. Mm -hmm. Your name is redeemed. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. See, those are the names that your earthly parents gave you. Yeah. Oh, my God. But when God saw you, uh -huh. he looked at you, and although he knew that you were messed up, he said, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Y'all don't want to hear this this morning. So, so here it is. In verse 18, then Moses said, now show me your glory. Here we go. And the Lord said, I will cause all of my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, 
I will put in you, put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Let me help you understand this. Because we do know and understand that we worship our God and our God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him what? In spirit and in truth. Is that right? Yeah. So understand when, when he's saying, when, when the Lord is saying to Moses, I'm going to put my hand in front of you then, and you're going to see my back. It's not so much that he has a biological setup for us to see. Amen. But just to the simple fact that knowing that his glory is passing by, the bit of that you can't even receive that. But he says this, he says this, talk about the back of the hand, so we can comprehend, so we can understand. Because we can't fully understand the glory and the presence of the Lord. Of the Lord. Amen. Am I making sense to you this morning? Mm -hmm. so, so here it is, God reveals himself to us in ways that he knows that we can take it. So in order for Moses, in that instance, to be able to take to see the glory that he was going to give to him, he had to shield part of himself from it. Because he couldn't take it all. I would, today, today, I'm going to just be honest. Today when I got up in my prayer time, it was just in my spirit. Father, I just want to see your presence. And I knew full well, neighbors, that I couldn't take all of his presence. Mm -hmm. But just to know, you got to understand, when you know you're in the presence of God, it's just such an atmosphere, Deacon, yes. Deacon yes. Rich. Yes. I mean, it's just such a, there's such a calm, there's such a peace, there's such a tranquil position that you're in when you're in the presence of God. There's no disturbance. Yeah. Amen. There's no, Nana! <laughs> hey, Dad! Hey, Dad! Mama! Mama! No. Nothing disturbing you. Amen. Nobody, listen, listen. No, no, no special ringtones, no special notifications. When you're in the presence of God, it's just you and him. So, so, who is the Holy Spirit? Good question. Let me help you understand. First of all, understand, first of all, the Holy Spirit is a person. That's number one. The Holy Spirit is a person. It is not, he is not a who or what. Or it. Thank you, other. It is not a it. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is a person. All right? Secondly, the Holy Spirit has emotions. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. The Holy Spirit, he has feelings. He has feelings. So much so, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. From the New International Version, the Bible says, And do not what grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of, of redemption. And that word grieve in the Greek means to make sorrowful, mm -hmm. to make to, 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 to affect with sadness. Mm -hmm. So, so there's, there are things that sometimes we do things that grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When we go against the will of God, that grieves the Holy Spirit. That makes him sad. Yes. Amen. So he can be grieved. He's a person. He's a, he, 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 he has emotions. He has feelings. And not only that, the Holy Spirit, he can lead us. He can direct us. Amen? In Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 and verse 6. Down to verse number 10. He directs us. And the Bible says, Now when they had gone through... Phrygia and the region of Galatia. They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come from Messiah, they tried to go to Bethania. But, but the Spirit, listen, did not permit them. Now passing by Messiah, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to where Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. So you see, 
that there, there's times when the Holy Spirit will tell you or allow you to go to a certain place. See, you might have in your mind to go a certain place, but when you listen to the, the voice of the Holy Spirit, by him leading you and directing you, he will let you know, no, Jordan, don't go over there. I want to go here. No, don't go here. And the reason why, and, reason, and I'm going I'm to let, let Sister Danette share a testimony after, after, after we get off the air. Because she has a testimony to, to, to say to the same exact thing about her wanting to go one place. And the Lord had been telling her, no, I don't want you to go there because I have something in store for you. And that's, you, here it is. Understand, beloved, you have to know and understand for your own lives. That when God says no to something, listen, he has something else better for you. All right, Pastor. Yes. We, we, we heard, we heard a... Uh, I forget who it was that preached. You know, sometimes we tell our children don't do certain things uh, and they think that we're trying to prevent them from having fun. That's not the case. What it is is that we've already been down that road, most of us. We've already been down that road. So we're going to tell you don't do this. Why? Not to stop you from having your fun, but to prevent you from falling into a trap that the devil has set for you. Because if we are as parents are lead, being led by the Holy Spirit, you got to know, children, that it's not the parent, but it's the Spirit of God that's in the parent that's trying to direct you. Yes. Yes. Help Amen. me, Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm. Doing good, Pastor. Doing good. So he will lead you. The Holy Spirit will direct you. Not only will he lead you, not only will he direct you, not only is he a person, not only does he have emotions and feelings, but here it is, watch this. The Holy Spirit comforts, he teaches, and he intercedes for us. Look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. Again, from the New King James Version. Likewise, get this, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Mm. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according what to the will of God. Mm. Here it is, beloved. Watch this. When you and I are under pressure and when you and I are under pain, it's sometimes very hard and difficult for us to really be able to articulate what it is that we want to pray for. Amen. Something that the Holy Spirit was saying to me this week as I was meditating on this message, and we, we talked about this on Wednesday night, but he gave me a new revelation. Huh, George, when we pray, mm -hmm. don't you know we only pray what we know? That's it. That's it. We pray what we know. But the, that's why the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Mm. That's why he's... he's the groanings are him speaking words to the Father that we ourselves don't know what to say. That's why when he intercedes for us, we, we're praying for one thing. We're praying because we're in tunnel vision. I see this happening, so I'm going to pray for this. But we don't see the big picture. So the Holy Spirit intercedes for us and said, Father, this is what Richard needs. This is what he's asking for. But I'm interceding for you. Give him for what he needs. Amen. We only can pray for what we see. Right. Right. Amen. 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 Father, here we go. I'm going to use her as an example. Father, I need a new job. Okay, but I, I see more than a new job for you, daughter. Mm -hmm. And that's where you are. It's just a temporary place. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I hear you. I hear you asking me for a new job. I hear you asking me for a new position. But I'm going to do something far beyond your imagination. Mm -hmm. So you're only praying for what you can see. That's right. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit is saying, no, Father, she needs something better. Her family needs something better. So this is what we're going to do for her. And then when, watch this, when it happens and you will realize, oh, man, it was the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that did this thing for me, that did this thing for us. Is that making any sense to you? Amen. He intercedes for us. He, he talks on our behalf. It's just like, it's just like, if you ever been to court, if you ever had to go before a judge, and you were in the wrong. Amen, somebody. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are the defendant. Is that right? Yes. Amen. And you got to stand before the judge. Talk to me, somebody. Mm -hmm. huh? Uh, but, but, and, and prayerfully, you have legal representation. Mm -hmm. All right. 
See, it's a bad thing to go before a judge if you ain't got an attorney. Can I help, can I help me somebody? See, and then watch this, watch this. Can I put it to you this way? And don't get a, a public defender. I'm going to break this down for you real quick. You need, to get, you need to get an attorney that you have to pay for. Someone's, oh, y'all missing this. Someone that don't mind because you, what, you paid the price. Jesus, who was our defense attorney, has already paid the price for us. So he can stand before the judge on your behalf and speak for you. And watch this and ask the judge to grant you mercy. And because of his faithfulness. Thank you, God. Y'all missing all this good stuff. Man, I hope y'all get this. Watch this video later on today. This is some good word here. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. oh. So he comforts, he teaches, he intercedes. He is a person. He has feelings. Amen. Uh, he, he leads us and he directs us. And then watch this. The Holy Spirit, he dwells in us. He dwells in us. He dwells in us. In John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 15 through 17 and the word of God says if you love me you will keep my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you what another helper to be with you what forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him you know him for he does what he dwells with you and will be in you. So here it is. He dwells in us. He dwells in us. Even, even, even sometimes when we do things that we have no business doing, he's still right there with us, dwelling in us, directing us and leading us. He dwells in us. And then, and then this is the final point I want to give to you and I'm going to be finished. The Holy Spirit you, you need to know and understand that he is a part of the Godhead. Yeah. He is a part of the Trinity. He is a part of the Trinity. There's, there is, they are, they are equal. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they equal. All right, they work together. There's none. There's no one higher than the other. There's no one lower than the other. They operate together. Mm -hmm. So much so. Listen, watch this, because you got to understand, it's a bad thing. Here it is. When we talk about grieving the Holy Spirit, we got to be careful of the things that we do. Being mindful that the Holy Spirit is watching us. Mm -hmm. He is watching us. Yes, Lord. He's what? Acts chapter 5, verse 1 through 4. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. But a man named Ananias mm. with his wife Sapphira yep. sold a piece of property. Mm -hmm. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and bought only part, bought only a part of it, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now here it is, now you gotta understand, they, they, they were, they had a choice, just like you and I, we have a choice. They had a choice, you know, to do what was right, Deacon Sam. Mm -hmm. bring, the, bring the money to the house. Mm -hmm. That's all you had to do. Right. Bring the money to the house, and everything will be fine. But no, they call this stuff trying to be slick with it. <laughs> <laughs> like ain't nobody gonna know. What's going on? Jesus. But the Holy Spirit knows. Yes, he, does. he knows. Listen, before you even do the act, Marcel, he already knows what's in your heart. Yes. Yes. That's why, that's why, don't you understand? That's why he's so urging you. Even when you feel him in your heart, telling you not to do a thing. Yes. That's him to listen, can I say this? Stop saying that. Stop, stop saying that he's a something or what's happening to you. Oh, something told me. No! <laughs> Give credit where credit is due. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. If you are a child of God, you ain't got no business guessing who it is that's speaking to you. Amen. You ought to know that's the Spirit of God. Yes. Oh, something told me, child. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> this ain't Dion Warwick in the, in the Psychic Friend Network. <laughs> Give our God credit. Amen. Here we go, Jordan. Verse 3, but Peter said to Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to who? The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land. Mm. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? Mm -hmm. And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? 
You have not lied to men, but to to God. So here it is. They're, they're, they're working together. You got the Holy Spirit. You lying to God. You lying. You just lying. I remember when I was growing up, Deacon Rich. My mom would say, "Ooh, don't don't say that word. That's a bad word. Don't say lie." Said you telling a story. A lie is a lie. Yes. Amen. Amen. Ain't no story. A story has a, 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 a beginning, a middle, and an end. A lie is just straight out a lie. Yes. Yes. Oh, don't say that word. It's a lie. You lie. You lie. In in Genesis chapter one, and I'm, I'm gonna be finished. Just want you to see who the Holy Spirit is. He's a part of the Godhead. He's a part of the Godhead. He's a part of the Trinity. They operate together. In the beginning, God created what? The heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. And watch this. And what? The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of of the waters. Mm. So we did, here it is that even when in the creation, we see the Holy Spirit still being active in creation. Mm -hmm. Because when God said, let there be, the Holy Spirit was right there when it was. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ in the beginning. They're, they're all together. All the time. They're part of the, the, they're, they're part of the, the Trinity. Mm -hmm. You don't see one without seeing the other. Amen. Amen. They operate together. So listen, I, I, I just wanted to, as, as we continue to teach you and build up until these spiritual gifts, you have to, you have to, there has to be a foundation. Amen. We can't jump into the spiritual gifts and you not know how you got to those spiritual That's gifts. Right, right. Amen. Amen. So this is just a teaching lesson. This is just a teaching. So if you didn't get it on Wednesday, I gave you something. Because what they got today, they didn't get this on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, class. Amen. Amen. Because it's new to me, Isaiah. <laughs> Some of the scriptures are the same, but the revelation is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have to know, we have to know, we have to accept Christ for what he did for our lives by going to the cross. That's, that's the first thing. You can't get to the spiritual gift part until you know what Christ did for you mm -hmm. and acknowledge it in your life. And then now here it is, you accept the Holy Spirit for who he is and how he operates and, and believe me, beloved, there are so many more scriptures and, and that I can get to you, but I just need you to get the basics of who the Holy Spirit is and how he operates. And I pray that today that you have a more better understanding of the Holy Spirit and how he operates and who he is. Amen. And the God here. And please acknowledge him. Acknowledge him when you know he's speaking to you. Amen. Acknowledge him when he's directing you. Amen. Don't don't turn don't turn your back. You you know. You ever uh, you ever have a little I, I, little Madison? Your, your granddaughter is so cute. But when I call Madison, Madison, she look just turn and go a whole direction. <laughs> watch this. That's not a bad thing. But watch this. She does that why? Because she don't know me. Mm -hmm. mm, that's, that's good. good. That's good. Amen. Amen. Preach Holy Spirit. That's good. So here it is. The reason why you're not listening when the Holy Spirit calls you is because you're not know, you don't know him. You're not familiar with his voice. I'm sure little Madison here on my like, who is that man? I know my papa because when I called her, she looked at me and ran straight to her papa. You may call me by my name, but I don't know who you are. The Holy Spirit calls us by our name. But we turn away from him. Why? Because we don't know who he mm. is. Let me give you this one little straight that came to my mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I'm going to be finished. Mm. We have to be... Oh, man, this is good stuff. Uh, we have to be connected to him. He wants to fill us. Uh, let me help you out. I gave this analogy on Wednesday. All of us in our homes have refrigerators. And especially this time of year, we filling them up. Amen. We filling them up. We got big old 20-pound turkey that's ready to go into Greece. So I got it sitting out, chilling, so I can inject it, right? Got all of the 
greens and all the other stuff that my wife done bought and put it all in the refrigerator, right? To get ready for Thanksgiving. But watch this. We fill a refrigerator because we can go to it and get nourished from it. Mm -hmm. Tony, what happens, what happens, what happens if the refrigerator becomes unplugged? Oh, everything's small. If the refrigerator becomes unplugged, watch this, after a while, so you might get away with one day, maybe two, maybe, mm -hmm. but after a while, everything that's in your refrigerator and in your freezer starts to, it's not cold any longer, now it starts to, to lose uh, its flavor and everything that belongs inside whatever it is that's in your refrigerator. Why? Because there's no power source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Help me, Holy Spirit. Good. Good, so what are you saying, Pastor? I want you to know and understand that our God is filling us with good things to nourish us. Mm -hmm. But if we don't stay connected to him, amen, that those things that are inside of us will run away. Yes, yes. Get this, get this, because not only are, is he putting things in there, are we putting things in our physical refrigerators to nourish us, but they're going in there, not so much for us, Marcel, but because we got guests coming to the house. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, you're not just feeding you, you're feeding somebody else. Yes. So if you're not connected, you can't feed nobody else, and you're going to die of starvation yourself. Mm. Praise All God. Right, Praise God. All right. So we have to stay connected to the Holy Spirit because he desires to put good things inside of us. Are you hearing me this morning? Hear you, He's desiring to put good things inside of us that not only nourishes us, but nourishes those that are around us. And y'all know come Thursday, I don't know about y'all, y'all gonna, we gonna have some folk at our house. Yeah. If you ain't got no folk coming to your house, you go to somebody's house, but you're gonna be part of the folk. <laughs> Amen. Listen, thank for those of you that are viewing, I thank you so much for taking the time and sharing with us on this morning. I pray that this lesson has in some way helped you and given you more information about who the Holy Spirit is. Again, there's much more that I would desire to give to you, but time does not permit me to do so. But just what the Holy Spirit gave to you today, I pray that it's a blessing to your life. If you're ever in the greater Atlanta area and Find yourself out here in the big city of Douglasville, Georgia. We would love to have you come by 1445 Municipal Parkway and worship with us here at Fully Rely on God Christian Ministry. I pray, I pray, and this is my prayer, that you have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, be thankful and be grateful for what God has given to you and poured out over your life. Amen. The, the year is almost up. And if you're still here amongst the land of the living, amen. There's that in itself is something to give God thanks for. Amen. If you don't have a turkey to eat or anything else, if you got breath in your body, Amen. tell God thank you. Amen. Don't wait till Thursday, but right now, tell him thank you. So listen, until the next time, thank you again so much for visiting and, and listening to us. Until the next time, have a prosperous, productive, and power-filled day, and always remember to fully rely on God.